Welcome to the latest edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Haig, and once again, as always, the Hudson County Sports Podcast is brought to you by the wonderful people at Stan Sports Center, which is located at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken, telephone number 201-798-4466. Make sure you go down to Stan's and say hello to Danny and Lou and, and Todd and all the great guys at Stan's, and if you mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast, you're going to get a 10% discount on all goods that are in the store. Anything that's in the store, no matter what it is, mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast, and you get 10% off. Not a bad deal. Today, as my, as my special guest, is somebody who should be known by a lot of people in Hudson County, even though he's been away for a while. Um, and I mean away in a good way, but uh, he's been away for a while. He was a... Uh, a great athlete during his days at Hudson Catholic. He then went on to um, play at St. Mary, uh, St. Francis of Pennsylvania in, in Loretto, Pennsylvania, which I don't know how in the world anybody ends up there. He then had a coaching career at St. Peter's College and then became a head basketball coach um, through th- three different schools in Hudson County, including uh, he's one of the rare ones that was a head coach at both Hudson Catholic and St. Peter's Prep. I think he may be. Other than maybe, no, I don't even think George Bellaney was ever the head coach at St. Peter's Prep, so I think you have the the distinction of being the only person to ever be the head basketball coach at both Hudson Catholic and St. Peter's Prep, but it's none other than my friend Bobby Ryan. Bobby, how are you doing today? No problem. Well, Yeah, no, I think that's the, that's the distinction that you hold. So I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. So, I mean, if somebody could correct me and say I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that Bobby is the only uh, head coach um, that coached both at, at St. Peter's Prep and at Hudson Catholic. So, anyway, all right, Bobby, tell me, tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up. Um, you said that you grew up, uh, you first, from uh, up until second grade, you grew up in the Greenville section. You went to Sacred Heart Grammar School, but then, you moved with your family to the wonderful joints of Nunda Avenue in St. San Al's Parish, and uh, uh, and you grew up there, and you got your CYO background in St. In St. Al's. But what was it like growing up in both neighborhoods, both first uh, in the Greenville section, and then growing up in the West Side section? And especially to go clear across Jersey City. I mean, you know, like, so there was no bus that was going across there. You'd have to, you know, like, the number nine went all over the town. That was like a, um, like, it was an absolute, you, you paid your tour, paid your fare to get on the number nine bus, and it was like a, a, uh, a historical tour of Jersey City. But, um, but, but going from Sacred Heart on Jackson Avenue, Martin Luther King Drive, to go back home to Nunda Avenue, what bus was there? I mean, you know, like, what, 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 you walk up to the, 
The Bergen Avenue? You take the Bergen Avenue bus? Or what What, what, what yeah. bus did you take? I could imagine. But, I mean, walking around in your Cub Scout uniform, uh, I don't know about that. That's, there's no way in the world you could have ever done that now. You'd, you'd be in serious <laughs> trouble. So, what but, an innocent little guy I was. <laughs> yeah, but, but hey, you got, the, got a chance to, to still stay with your friends that you went to Cub Scouts with, so that's not bad. Sure. Yes, he did. Yeah, with yeah. with Rocky, right? Well, yours was a legitimate restaurant. Murph's was not. Uh, Murph, Murph's maybe had maybe served a hamburger. Um, you know, the, <laughs> the, the Murph's was definitely a, 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 a bar to end all bars. You know, so although I don't get me wrong, I, I was there too as well. But uh, but Murph, 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 no, Murph had a good lunch crowd because it was right in the Dirty Montgomery. So he, you know, so he had he had that building right there. But in terms of after you know, after five o'clock, that was strictly a bar. There was nobody going to Murph's to eat, you know. So. And, and, and then he closed up nice and early too, though, which was uh, very nice that you could do that. You know, he opened up early to get that uh, business crowd down, down, uh, down uh, early in the morning. He opened up early for breakfast, and then uh, yeah, a little bit into the evening, it was closing time. Yeah. So, and it worked well, and it worked well for him because then he was. It gave him time to gallivant. No, only kidding. God bless Tur Murph. He's a wonderful man. Uh, you know, he was he was a real, 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 real good man. But uh, uh, so, but yep, he really has. But a good, but, but a good, a good, good man. And that, and that, and his place was a lot of, lot of fun, a lot of fun. Uh, um, and from what I gather, he was a good basketball coach too, as well, right himself. Right, like wasn't he the freshman coach for Rocky for many years at Hudson? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, he was also, uh, uh, he had a nice gig too for a while. He was bartending at Lakeham uh, also during some of those Rocky years. See, that, that I never knew. Yeah, see. Okay. There's no question. All right, so um, now let me ask you, at that time, so St. Al's had their own basketball program that the kids played in, and then there was their teams that also played in the CYO that went to Bergen Avenue and played in the, in the old uh, CYO facility on Bergen Avenue?
<laughs> now, when you said bitty, when you said bitty basketball, um, the first ever uh, bitty superstar to come out of Jersey City came from St. Al's, and that was Vinnie Ernst, and uh, um, he was he was Mr. Bitty and a Bitty All American when he was uh, when he was 12 years old, and that Bitty All Star team that he was on won the national championship. And they went to the White House, and not only did they meet Eisenhower, but they also met Richard Nixon. Imagine that. that, that these, are, these are 12-year-old kids from Jersey City that got to meet two presidents of the United States. Yeah. yeah. So I never saw it then, but I did see him when I was in the State House Grammar School. I did see that he played for the State House High School. Oh, you did? Okay. Sure. Yeah, who became the mayor of uh, mayor of Boston? Yeah. Big, uh, Big John Thompson, God bless him. Yeah. That's right, Nehru played there, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ernie Di Gregorio. I agree with you. He was a lot of fun to watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and without the shot, too. He had no shot, but, you know. Pistol, <laughs> Pistol Pete could put it in the basket. Ernie, Ernie D wasn't putting it in the basket that often. But and you mentioned Ernie D. Now we're going to get off the beaten path. The my One of my favorite teams that I ever watched as a kid was the Buffalo Braves with Ernie D. Gregorio and Bob McAdoo and Jim McMillan and... Uh, Randy Smith. Oh, were they? Were they Garfield Heard? They were a fun team to watch, boy. They were. They were really fun, right? And, and, and how long did Ernie last? Two or three years in the pros? No, he lasted longer than that. I'm going to say maybe about five or six years. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then he and then he uh, after he left the Buffalo Braves, then he went um, with the Celtics for a while, but he was on, in decline already then. And then he had uh, he had a, a, a stint with the Nets, um, but by then he was you know he was really in decline at that point. But still, uh, Ernie D was a hell of a player to watch and a lot and a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, so now let's 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 talk more about Bobby Ryan. So now, um, did you get a sense at the, first of all too growing up as a kid? Okay, you talked about St. Al's having this bitty program. Did you live in that close to Lincoln Park? Did you play all sports growing up as a kid? Did you play baseball? Did you play basketball? You know, even with with, with the kids in the neighborhood. Well, that's what we did in those days, right? Yeah. So I I played uh, and now the football team. Mickey Alves was our coach, uh, and he had a son named Mickey Alves. Yep. Fast, it's, it's, and you know what? Still to this day, he's the fastest human being alive. And he had a he had a great career at Marist High School. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good guy. Real good. Mickey's a great guy. Great guy. I haven't seen him in a long time. I hope I hope he's doing well. But he was still, you know, he he used to play softball with us at the Park Tavern. Great, great guy. So. Oh. All right. So anyway, so you played all all sports in grammar school. It was just natural, right? I, I tried to. I, I wasn't a good baseball player, and I just played uh, football and basketball. Uh, and I was disappointed because again, in those days, it was you played uh, uh, football and then. 
Okay. How, Bobby, how wild was it to ha grow up in a neighborhood and especially to have the park right there where you would just, you know, grow, crawl out of the house and then go to Lincoln Park and be able to play all day long? Well, uh, that's where we got involved with other sports, tennis sports. How many tennis sports? Uh, we had one in Park. Right. Handball courts. Yeah. It really is. It's unbelievable. You can't. You can't comprehend. It's still the same. It's the same place. It really is. And it's not. And it's not easy to play either. It's not easy. Yeah, no, but 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 it's it's really it's a beautiful Skyway Golf is a really really great golf course and and uh, yeah, it really is nice. Yep. Okay. And we also had You drew a box on the wall and that was the strike zone and you pitched to the box, right? Yeah. Yep. And I guess that ended the Ryan brothers playing tackle football in Lincoln Park. I don't know if your, your, your parents would have put up with that anymore, you know? Alright, so talk a little bit about, was there any discussion at all of where you were going to go to high school, considering the fact that Hudson Catholic was practically brand new, and you grew up, and you went to St. Al's Grammar School, so was there any discussion of where you were going to go to high school, and what made you choose going to Hudson Catholic? Okay. I got it to Hudson, so I went there. And our first year, we went to St. Patrick's Grammar School. We had the third floor, the whole third floor of St. Patrick's Grammar School. And that's where Hudson Catholic went to school? Yeah. Wow. So 
Wow, okay. Now with no building, with no building, Bobby, where where did Hudson Catholic play? I mean, where where did where did you where, you know what, what gyms did you use? And who was the basketball coach then? It wasn't Rocky, was it? Was it George Blaney? All right, but uh, but he was our freshman coach, and uh, and we had uh, and I don't remember who we went, but we were called City Jams in our freshman year. Wow. And what year? And what year is this now? Roughly like sixty four. This is nineteen sixty four. Yeah. Okay. Were you playing football too at that time? Oh my god. <laughs> they ended your career for you. Okay, you're sick. Give us your equipment. You're done. By the time you were a senior, were you playing varsity? Did you have a varsity schedule? And um, and what were you start? Did you start to at that time start to get a little bit better? Were you start to become a, a good, pretty good player? Yeah. 
Sure. Absolutely, he was a man. Yeah. Okay. See, I never knew that. I thought you played all throughout the four years. So. All right, so now you graduate from Hudson Catholic, and what what made uh, what was the thought process in going to college? I apologize. All right, tell us. And who are those guys? The senior was Don Van Leer. Oh my gosh, okay. Who was part of that great back line with Jerry Smart, Jerry Smart, 
Jerry Sloan and, and Bob Love and Tom Bowinkle and oh that Bulls team and was unbelievable. Yeah, oh God, they would beat they would beat you to hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, freshman, my class they get the water. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 ye
Right. Yeah. So that that was what led me into college coaching. It was more who I knew. Okay. Right place, right time. Beautiful. So I you know, two years with Dave and then uh the opening at St. Peter's College and Okay. Well we'll get back to that in one second after this uh you gotta you know, gotta pay the bills. And uh, our word from Stan Sports Center. Stan Sports Center is your local full-service sporting goods vendor and authorized team dealer. They offer quality products and dozens of brands to outfit your team top to bottom. Stan's has proudly been supporting the com- local community since 1946 and is your one-stop shop for uniforms, equipment, online team stores, and much more. Locations in Hoboken and Saddlebrook and servicing the entire tri-state area Visit them on the web at StansSportsCTR.com. That's StansSportsCTR.com. And check them out on social media for their latest creations. And that's Stan Sports Center at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken. And go down and say hi to my friends Danny and, and Louie and, and Todd. And again, mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast. And you'll get a 10% discount on any retail items that are in the store. So that's not a bad deal. Go mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast and and visit everybody at Stan's at Stan Sports Center, 528 Washington Street in Hoboken. Okay, we're back with Bobby Ryan. And Bobby is now just going to begin to talk about taking the job as an assistant coach at St. Peter's College. And um, first of all, talk a little bit about what was it like to live in Loretto, Pennsylvania after – living in Jersey City. and Was that like culture shock? Was it like you know, one one thing to the next? I mean, it, like there's nothing going on in Loretto, and you're, you're used to being in Jersey City where everything's going on. There's absolutely nothing that was going on. Right. It was uh, a true rural wilderness. Uh, the town of Loretto was maybe three blocks in length. It had two bars, one for the local and one for uh, the college. Okay. And uh, the, the sheriff of uh, Loretto, who was just like Barney Five, just was patrolling, and he was also the city barber. Uh, city so barber. Cool. Barber, where you get a haircut. Single eggs. I've never heard of that in my life. Single eggs. <laughs> so, uh, as a student, if you didn't join the fraternity, you really didn't have much of a social life. I can figure. Well, luckily, luckily, I joined the fraternity, and Dave McGarity was in that same fraternity. Okay. And, uh, when I went back as a student, I mean, as a coach, uh, my first year, I was. Big, it's rock, rocking town, Altoona. Rocking. <laughs> All of 80,000 people put a free business at the So, uh, but the dry, you know, uh, you can see that the snow would start in October, you know, all the way through April. Uh, it was a cold area. It was uh, icy. But you know what? Absolutely. Oh, then no question. Yeah, beautiful kid. And, and, uh, but yeah, it was different. And when that next year's job opened up, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get back to a city. Any city. Especially this being home. So to go from urban to rural, I mean, building this world, as someone who was now in my later 20s, Uh, a lot of time to go. 
Okay. So when you got the job at St. Peter's, Bob Duquette, I guess, was the head coach then. Um, what was that like for you to be able to come home and be a, a be coaching college basketball in uh, in the area? Uh, it was just special. I, I, you know, once that, like once you say Peter's College, but it's just you know, Yep. Happens to be my second cousin, but we won't have to go into that though. But, but yes, he is my. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Well, I, I was lucky enough to get to know him when he helped me for battle out of the St. Mary's and then uh, went to St. Francis. Sure. Sure. Ended up playing the same. He went to Seton Hall, and Brian Lee, God rest his soul. And um, oh man, oh they were very, they were both the two of them were very good, very very good. Yeah, what a great player. Yeah. Right. So wait. So Kou, so P. Romano took over for Kutra. What's the what's the, yeah? Okay. Yeah, he went to and Wardlaw Hartridge. Yeah, he was coaching two schools at the same time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're at St. Peter's, and you got, a, you know, Duquette did a pretty good job of getting some local kids to, to go there. Felix Rivera also was there. He didn't play much. He didn't stay there, but he was, but he was there, right? Exactly. So, so the Felix Rivera, Shelton Gibbs, uh, Phil Jamison, uh, Andre Addison. I mean, uh, who am I missing? Um, you said George Molman was on. It was on that team too. He didn't play much. But then um, Leonard Hayes was from Atlantic City. Leonard Hayes. Oh, my God. Leonard was a great player. Yep. He, he was a great guard. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, John Petrullis. Johnny K, my boy. Yes. Yeah. He'll be happy to know that you get you mentioned him. He'll be very happy to know. But you can't. No, no, no. Yeah, you, you really had to. And uh, a, a day of practice, you know, college teams like to go two and a half hours. They can start out with, then it starts up and knock it down to two hours or an hour and a half. Bobby, you know, two and a half hours, sometimes three hours, sometimes three and a half hours, sometimes four hours. He was a perfectionist with that team. Yep. Now, 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 see, now that I got you, there was a kid that never played for St. Peter's, but was recruited, scholarship player, and was all bought to become 
uh, a superstar, and that was Ralph Talley. How good of a player was Ralph, and um, is it a shame that he never got a chance to play for the Peacock? Well, I, I'm sure, I, I, I think that Ralph Talley was a Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was from, uh, I think, Collingswood, New Jersey. And, uh, and he was also, again, not a big guy. He was about 6'2", 6'3", um, but could shoot lights out. And everybody was, couldn't wait until he became eligible. And then something happened and he was gone. And then the next thing, he went to go play uh, at an NAIA school in Virginia. And lo and behold, where does he end up? He ends up with the the L.A. Lakers. So, I mean, so there's a kid. So he played in the NBA, but yet he never got a chance to play at St. Peter's. And you say, how does that happen? You know, I was a kid that was that good um, and never got a chance to play at St. Peter's. But that was, you know, that was typical of, uh, I don't think he could abide by Dukey's rules and um, and you know, wouldn't abide to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it'd be great to get a kid like it. Now, the school really has to stretch to admit him. Oh, big time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, the school did us a favor by admitting him. And they basically told him, you know, you got to get these grades, you got to do this and show uh, a certain level. And, um, and then Bobby was a tough coach. He was a tough coach. Right. He was a tough play for him. Um, um, so a combination of grades and playing the coach you get uh, just didn't work out. Yeah. And, uh, but he would have been, he, it, it would have been in sensational to see him on the floor at the same time with Shelton Gibbs uh, and Leonard Hayes. And Tommy Best, that would have been an incredible. That, who knows how good that St. Peter's team could have been if Ralph Talley hadn't played. So. Now you talk about scoring everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Right. That was stretching it big time, yeah. Could jump to the moon. Oh, God, could he jump to the moon? More importantly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you beat Michigan State in the Meadowlands and 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 Arkansas? And did you also beat play Arkansas in the Meadowlands too? And and uh, with Sidney Moncrief, and you beat them too? Oh no, not Ron Moncrief. He was a little older. Um, oh, oh my, thinking of Ron Brewer was on the Arkansas team, I believe, right? Yeah, and they also had Joe Klein as the center. Yeah. After from Notre Dame, yeah. And, 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 and yeah. Ever again, right? <laughs> no, because they came away with their lives. Oh, wow. Probably had three or four guys uh, and all played. Uh, three guys who got drafted in the first round of the NBA. <laughs> I mean, that was before Magic Johnson, but it was Greg Kelser. Uh, oh, God, I can't oh, think. Greg Kelser, yeah. yeah, I I can't think of the other two guys that got drafted 
uh, in the first round of the NBA, and and uh, and St. Pete has beat him at the Meadowlands. Yeah. You know, where I really, uh, the first time that year we played at the corner, and Tommy had this, and Tommy had David Maxwell, who became a pro for a short time. He was the point guard, and he had two cousins from Africa, a seven footer and a six nine, six ten guy. I can't remember their name. Wow. That was when the NBA had, you know, seven or eight rounds in those days uh, with the draft. But they were, oh my God, these guys have pros all over. And we went to Florida and Tommy Penn was to run the coach. We go to Florida and we walk out with a victory. And it just hit me like, wow. You know, now I understand why we practice three and a half hours, sometimes four hours. Yeah. Pat Kennedy was head coach, yeah, because Valvano had left and went to NC State, and he left it. He, he left yeah. it to Pat Kennedy. And now, incredibly, Val, and now, incredibly, Patino is going to be the coach there this year, which is just unbelievable. Okay, so how long did you stay at St. Peter's for? How many years? Three years. Three years. Okay. No kidding. Okay. Okay. So that worked out really nice. And was Cap Straw Cap Straw there too as an assistant? Yeah. Uh, that's not a bad group. If you can hang around, if you can hang around with Neil Kennett and and Timmy Capstraw for as long as possible, that's not a bad group to hang around with. They're, those are good guys. Oh, yeah. Good guys. Good guys. At that point, Timmy was a player. He wasn't the coach. He was a player. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, Neil had the number one uh, scoring leader in the country playing for him. Oh, God, sure. Oh, God. And, uh, Harrison was, oh, what a great scorer. Whether it was shooting or just driving. He had a little Russell Westbrook in there. Oh, good call. Cool. Good call. Cool. They still are one, both wonderful gentlemen and, and ambassadors for basketball. Both of them are incredible. Yeah, yeah great, great, yeah. great, great men. Yeah. All right, so tell me a little bit about what made you what made you want to get into the bar business, and what made you get buy into the Hamilton Park Alehouse, especially downtown Jersey City, 
not a great area when you bought it. With, I mean, there's a huge gamble involved with it. Uh, so what made you want to get into the, the, the bar and restaurant business? Right. My business partner, Jerry Smith, who I grew up with, up with running businesses in Baltimore, he lived in Baltimore, called me up one day and said, hey, would you be interested in maybe we get a place down by the water and uh, down by the Hudson River and uh, we try and do this? And I was like, wow. I never had any thoughts at all. Even though I did bartend and was here all the time, every place, parked out. Right. And, uh, um, you know, Jerry said, uh, you, you went to high school with uh, May McCann. Why not uh, get some thoughts from him about what's going on down town? And uh, it redeveloped it right that Tommy Lee was a good friend of mine. Okay. Uh, Okay. All right. So, what was it about the Hamilton Park area that wanted you to make you go there? And what was the what was the Ale House before you you bought it uh, you bought it and purchased it, the area? What was what was that location? Wow. No one, no one was there. When I was teaching and coaching at St. Michael's High School, it was a little bodega on the door. Okay. Okay. Oh, it was a huge gamble. A huge gamble taking that on back then, right? Yeah. Get 
Yeah. All right. So how how long did it take before you got uh, up and running, uh, and it, all of a sudden you then you start to realize, all right, we made the right decision. Shepherd's pie. Two, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, sure. No, it was, it, it was all day. That's what it is now. It's no more. It's dropped the L house, but it's still Hamilton Park. But anyway, we're going to get to. The, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, your your life and moving forward from that point in just a second. But I've got to give Stan's another plug. Stan Sports Center is your local full service sporting goods spender and authorized team dealer. They offer quality products and dozens of brands to outfit your team top to bottom. Stan's has been proudly supporting the local community since 1946 and is your one-stop shop for uniforms, equipment, online team stores, and much more. Locations in Hoboken and Saddlebrook and servicing the entire tri-state area. Visit them on the web at Stan's Sports Center. Oh, no, StanSportsCTR.com. Let me repeat that again. StanSportsCTR.com. And check them out on social media for their latest creations. And uh, if you mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast, when you go to the store, they'll take a 10% uh, discount on all uh, of the uh, retail stuff that is in their store. All their MLB stuff, all their NFL stuff, all their basketball stuff. 
whatever's in the store, 10% off, not a bad deal. And also go down to Stan Sports Center, located at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken. Telephone number is 201-798-4466. Again, 201-798-4466. And again, mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast. Get a 10% discount on all retail stuff. Okay, we're now back with Bobby Ryan. And Bob, uh, now you're now a full-time uh, restaurateur and business owner. And you probably would have never thought that that would ever happen in your life, but it, it, it took on a, a life of its own. And then, lo and behold, you, you, you got the itch again, and you wanted to get back into coaching. And what made you go back to applying for the job at your, uh, your alma mater first? Wow. Be a parent, be a coach, and be a, a business owner all at once. That must have been that, you know, that out of your mind. And you had some good years in Hudson Catholic, not great years, but yeah, you know, the, 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 at least your teams were competitive. And how much fun was that to coach uh, Hudson Catholic back then? It, it, it was like being back home. It, it really was. That, that truly was home. Uh, whereas uh, back home, you know, walking in, just, oh, wow, this is my school. Yeah. Ended up being a thousand point scorer, sure. Did you have Egon Lewis too? Egon Lewis? Okay. Okay. Yep. You had a good coaching staff, that's for sure. Bless him. God bless him. Good man. All right, so now you 
Uh, you, so you spent, what, five years at Hudson County? I spent four years there. Okay, and then did you stay away from the game right away? Because you didn't go directly from Hudson to prep now, did you? I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then what 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 made you leave at that point? Did you say to yourself, "Okay, I've done," or or did the uh, the opportunity to move to New Orleans uh, pop up? Okay. And then it went back to coaching again. You ended up coaching and teaching at a school in uh, in Louisiana. Tell what school was that, and talk a little bit about that, real quick. Okay. Yeah. 
Wow. Ah. Jerry Fowler. Jerry Fowler. His school, his campus, uh, was part of our league. And he had a, a, a most gorgeous gym. Right. Oh man. Oh man. Colleen did. Okay. Wow. Okay, and then did you, you you made it all the way. Did you become the principal of the school that you were at, or no? Is it or just you were just a regular teacher? Regular teacher. Oh, okay. All right. Now, at, at the same time, then you and Donna uh, purchased a property in um, in North Myrtle Beach, and I guess you just loved going there, and uh, uh, that became like your um, your uh, vacation home, correct? <laughs> and it's quite there. At a restaurant, one of these other your aunt and your cousin. Well, no, my my sister-in-law and my niece. That's my oh. that's my bro that's my bro my brother's wife my my brother's wife and my niece. Man, my brother's wife and my brother's daughter. That's who that you guys. That's quite all right. All right. So, but now. Um, I hate to bring it up, Bobby, but uh, unfortunately, I guess it must be about six years ago, you had a really, really uh, scary time in your life. You were involved in an automobile accident that almost took your life and almost, and it seriously injured Donna, but it critically injured you. 
and I know you don't remember any of it at all, but you were in a coma for quite some time. Uh, and how, how frightening was that to go through that kind of a thing where you got hit? And unfortunately, the guy who hit you was a drunk driver. How long were you in a coma? How long were you in a coma for, Bob? I was in a coma for two weeks. I was in, uh, I think, yeah, two full weeks. Uh, and I was in the uh, intensive care unit for seventeen days. Wow. Um, and you were in an, an induced coma because they were worried about brain swelling too, right? Is that the, is that what happened? Well, Wow. And what year was this? 2015? That was 2014. 2014. Okay. Wow. Right. And then Colleen was living in Los Angeles at the time. She had to take a, uh, one of those red eyes like that with a boyfriend. Who's now her husband. Right. How, how tough of a struggle was that for you, Bobby, in terms of, you know, learning to walk again and learning to even talk and, uh, you know, all the different things that you had to go through in your rehabilitation? How tough of a time was that? You know, it, it wasn't as Unbelievable. <laughs> you being a South Carolina guy, a big South Carolina fan, now you can't give Clemson credit for anything, you know? Yep. Very much so.
That, and I, and that the, well, that's the best, the good thing about it. That's uh, the only, you know, I can't yeah. say the good, the good thing. Sure. That I didn't know, but yeah, but I, but, but I know he's big, he's big in the Myrtle Beach area. There's no question. So. Yeah. All right, but uh, um, you know, how thankful are you that you were able to, you know, you were able to recover from your injuries? And it was, you know, it was a scary time there, Bobby. We all thought that we may lose you, and uh, how, you know, how grateful are you to all your rehab people that get you through that tough time? And now you're, you know, you're out and about and still hitting a little white ball, which is probably the best thing of all, right? Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh gosh, you are you're not kidding. So all right, now tell before we let you go, tell us about the last page in your stage in your life that you moved from Charlotte, you moved clear across the country uh, to follow Colleen and Jeff. And Jeff is a firefighter in Southern California, and you decided, okay, let's pack up and move one more time. So you moved to uh, to Southern California last year, and what's that been like for you?
Right. Wow. Two months, so one would fly out, and then two months later, Jeff would fly to the East Coast. So that went on for five years. Well, one year, Colleen worked in Los Angeles, but she was much, much closer at that point. But uh, yeah, one child, so, you know, why aren't we going to be high on it? It's been great. I have very close friends who live close to us, Jerry Hurley. Right. A lot of people would be happy to know that he's doing well. That you know, a lot of people would love you still remember Jerry. Yep. Jerry replaced uh Rodney Cole and we have the name we'll get together much because we always go back to Jersey City, bring it up game and just having so much fun talking about the old school old stuff. Okay. And we'll Okay, now t- tell tell everybody what what town is it that you live in? We live in Oceanside, California, which is this town really part of San Diego County. Right. So we're we're thirty minutes from uh, from San Diego. So which is not bad, and that's not a bad thing. Go take a nice little day yeah. trip to Hotel Del Coronado and have a couple cocktails there. That's not a bad yeah. place. Yeah, not a bad place. And then Oceanside, Oceanside is where the military base is, right? Isn't that where the military base is, right? You got it. Yeah. You got it. And what's interesting, we're so close to them, we could be sitting in our yard and day or night and hearing bombs go off. Right. Yeah. The, 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 doing that drill. And we'll, we'll be listening, wow, what's that? Oh, yeah. bombs from Pendleton. <laughs> right. The Camp, Camp Pendleton. Uh, my, my, uncle, my uncle worked there for ages, so I had a... I had an aunt and uncle that lived in Fallbrook, California, for years. Yeah, and they lived there. And my uncle lived. My uncle worked at Camp Pendleton, so they, you know, talk about the bombs going off all the time. Yeah, so. So, but so far, you know, you're still a Jersey City boy at heart, even though you're living in in Oceanside, California, all right. Wow. He sent, me, uh, he sent me copies of Jersey last week when Tommy Hart was redoing the Jersey City uh, Division of Recreation, renaming it the Leisure Activities. Leisure Activities, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And Jerry Hurley and Eddie Ford were two of the uh, count, uh, the group uh, leaders. Yeah, they, they, the, uh, what were what they called? The, the ward leaders, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not bad. That was my boss twice. God bless her. She was a, what a tough cookie that was. She was Jones. Jones' reaction to everything was no. When you first when you go in and you ask her something, the first thing out of her mouth was no. And then I'd have to finally say I'd finally have to say Joan, listen to me. This is a, this will be really good for other kids and be able to you know like like taking them to a tournament in Chester, Pennsylvania, or going to Plymouth, Pennsylvania. I said this will be really good for the kids, and she go, okay, Jimmy. You know, like she she trusted me a great deal, but the first thing out of her mouth always was no, and then I have to like I'd have to coax her into letting me do the things that I wanted to do. But she was tough cookie, but I got along with her really really well. I was one of the I was very fortunate to say that I got along with Joan very very well. So, but all in all, all, what's that? Yeah, see. All in all, Bobby, how uh, how great has it been? I mean, I don't want to 
I'm wondering how say how old you are now, but I'm gonna guess that you're what, seventy two? Seventy. All right. I don't want to rush that on you. All right. So seventy years old, and a lot of that, a lot of those years were spent in sports. So you got to feel feel very grateful that uh, that sports uh, gave you a life and helped you. You know, you got a wife, you got a you got a daughter, and you still got a lot of friends, and that's all because of your association with sports growing up as a kid, right? No, see, I didn't know that. See, you learn something new every day. When every day when I do this podcast, I learn something new. Think so? Good. Sure. As long as the house is cl is close to within reach of Donna, that's all that matters. So if the house is done, you know, if Donna can get there, then that's all. That's the most important thing, right? And, and Jim, you know, we bought we, we bought a place in a fifty-five square foot house, and we were Right. Oh my gosh. No. Yeah, what I what Irish guy from Jersey City is playing bocce ball anywhere, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Well, just like you've done great things for, for for people all your entire life, Bobby, so that you, you deserve now to enjoy your golden years uh, playing pickleball of all things. So enjoy that, and uh, and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to, to join me on the podcast. I told you it was going to flow easily, and it was an hour and 40 minutes on the air. It's been three hours off the air, so we're doing a pretty good job, you and I talking today away. So. So, but I thank you very much. I thank you very much for uh, for sharing your story with me, Bobby, and uh, and and hopefully we will all get together someday soon. Um, and uh, you know, I always look forward to talking to you and keeping in touch and, and getting to see you. You know, that's the uh, most important thing. So. Okay. Will do. Absolutely, and it was a joy for me too. It was great to great to talk to you, Bobby. You take care of yourself and best of Donna and Colleen, and then we will be in touch. Okay, pal. Well done. All right, take care, take care of yourself, Bobby. All right, bye bye. And that was my special guest today, Bobby Ryan. 
uh, from Jersey City, uh, the former uh, owner of the Har Hamilton Park Alehouse, uh, who also was the head basketball coach both at St. Peter's Prep and at Hudson Catholic. Thanks so very much for listening to this edition of the Hudson County Sports Podcast. My special thanks to my executive producer, Johnny Haig, with my nephew, who without him, uh, there wouldn't be a, such a thing as the Hudson County Sports Podcast. And we're in the 40s now with the amount of additions that we've done uh, which in, in, a, in the span of a year, coming up on a year anniversary, which is an amazing thing. Thanks so very much to everybody for listening. We'll be back next week with another edition. We'll take care and have a great day. And again, thanks to my special, uh, my special sponsor, Stan Sports Center, located at 528 Washington Street in Hoboken. Uh, telephone number is 201-798-4466. And mention the Hudson County Sports Podcast, and you'll get a 10% discount. Thanks again for listening today. I'm your host, Jim Haig. Have a pleasant day. <laughs>